noise was constant, unrelenting, unsettling. Block after city block, bus driver Rob Gould could hear nothing but the chatter, the chit-chat, the grinding gossip that would not stop. He had a headache, and he was only halfway through his route. At the light, a woman in a navy blue blazer in the next lane honked to get his attention, busily pointing and gesturing that he let her pull up in front of him when the light turned green. So desperate was she to get around him, so entitled to have her way. Classic. Another graduate of the LA Academy of Driving, with a doctorate in, me first, fuck you. Stupid little bitch. She's probably never even been on a bus. He wished her designer labeled brain could realize an important concept. The when you're in your car and you feel like you just can't wait to get around that slow ass bus up ahead, the one who's in your way and who's been blocking your progress for the last 10 minutes, that there are people right now standing at a bus stop who can't wait to get on it. So Rob decided to not let the woman in, no way. And just to make sure she didn't get ahead of him, he also decided to skip the next stop and went racing down the street, now in second gear, now in third, nose to nose with the irate woman. He looked down at her with a sinister sense of satisfaction as she yelled silent but deadly curses at him from the safety of her oversized luxury box. But then, suddenly, a powerful crying out of dissatisfaction exploded from the interior of his own bus, and Rob felt the sting of rebellion from amongst his own passengers. He was shocked and surprised at the outburst. After all, he was standing up for them. It was about time someone stood up for them. Didn't they know that? He wasn't about to let some fancy downtown diva in a new SUV and a city hall business suit push them around. No way. And yet, here they were, screaming their displeasure, ungratefuls. They jumped to their feet. They drew down their brows. They yelled stuff in Spanish. One guy started slamming the molded plastic walls of the interior with the flat of his hand, making the whole bus shake. Finally, Rob just pulled the damn thing over and put it into park. He couldn't believe it. The lady in the SUV whizzed by, honking her horn and screaming with her middle finger extended, her righteous path to heaven now assured. Exhaling with annoyance and frustration, Rob looked deep into his rearview mirror and studied the Malay. A gnawing and disappointing prickle of disloyalty made the back of his neck burn, and he turned off the engine. Okay, you sons of bitches, so that's how you want to play it? Well, fuck it. So he grabbed a Santa Anita coffee mug and California Breeders' Cup sunglasses. He left the keys in the ignition. He left his garden burger sandwich and a bag of carrot sticks in the glove compartment but shoved the 24-ounce can of Mickey's Big Mouth into his pocket. And so, Rob Gould, peppered from behind with jealous taunts, stood up from his seat and turned to face the lower-income taxpayers. Reaching down for his microphone for the very last time at 4th and Broadway, he announced sarcastically, Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. He opened the door with a whoosh, hopped down two steps, and walked away from MTA forever. <laughs>